Good morning, and welcome to the Immaculate Conception on this 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please rise for the procession.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Christ, be with you all. Entry into the mysteries of the Lord's death and resurrection. Let us ask God for the forgiveness of our sins, that we might be worthy to offer sacrifice and praise. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, merciful and strong, who crush wars and cast down the proud, be pleased to banish violence swiftly from our midst and to wipe away all tears, so that we all may truly deserve to be called your children through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a rich, of rich food and choice wines. Juicy, rich food and pure, choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near westful waters he leads me. my soul. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accordance with his glorious riches in Jesus Christ. In our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord.
the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts so that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus again, in reply, spoke to the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fatted cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite the feast, whoever you may find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Eight October 2023, the New York Times headline, an attack from Gaza and an Israeli just declaration of war. Now what? We have seen the images and heard the stories. Revulsion and fear, anger and revenge to numbness again mark our spirits. We have been here before, heard similar stories, and seen related images. The evil named the dehumanizing of the enemy by each side, the blame proffered. Will this war escalate to engulf the region, the world? Now what? As a people of faith, we need to ask, where is God in the midst of this horror and destruction? For there is no war that is holy, and there is no war that is just. There is only war. Human beings killing human beings. Amen. 
War is the absolute failure of the human race. Where is God then? Have we considered that God is absent, abandoned by his sons and daughters? If God is anywhere, is not God kneeling in a field holding in his arms the murdered body of Abel? Is God not taking down from the tree the body of Absalom, the son of King David, and crying with every parent, if only I had died in your place? Is not God accusing the heavens over the slaughtered children of Bethlehem, rocking and clutching the, his dead son to his chest after being taken down from the cross, holding in embrace all who are dead? Does not God weep with Eve and Adam, King David and Mary, and every parent throughout the ages, and refuse to be consoled? If God is anywhere, is God not in the midst of this pain and sorrow? And what of Cain and his descendants? Cain is vulnerable, laid open for revenge. Yet God puts a mark on Cain to protect him. Cain belongs to God. We too are marked, but with the blood of the Lamb. We belong to God, bad and good alike. In the Midrashic tradition of the Jewish people, a tradition that uses story and imagination to reconcile apparent biblical contradictions, it is told. One day the angels of God were rejoicing and singing with great excitement. God asked them, Why are you so filled with song and dance? They shouted with triumph, Your children, Israel, have just walked dry shod through the Reed Sea to freedom. God again asked the angels, Why are you so filled with dance and song? My children, the Egyptians, are dead. My children, the Ukrainians, are dead. My children, the Israelis, are dead. My children, the Russians, are dead. My children, the Palestinians, are dead. My children are dead.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <laughs> to God, who is master of the wedding feast of eternity, let us pray. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church to be open to all people without judgment, bad as well as good, that all might be healed and saved. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Spirit's gift of respectful listening during the World Synod of Bishops. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an openness within the Church to the movements of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For unity among Christians, and for the people, dean, and clergy of the Cathedral of All Saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of joy and thanksgiving within the members of the Flame of Love of the Immaculate Heart of Mary movement. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a compassionate openness and understanding to refugees and asylum seekers who approach national borders throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper relationship within couples who are living out the sacrament of marriage. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For strength for people who are burdened by life, addictions, poverty, and hardships. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For hope for all who mourn and eternal life for our dead in Christ, including Father Henry Finnegan, Father Francis Kelly, Father Matello Gelanti, Father George Quinlevin, and Father Paul Cronin. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the people and situations that we hold deep in our hearts and bring to this holy table. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of the wedding feast, whose invitation to eternal life is offered to all people, answer our prayers through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the life-giving Holy Spirit, our God, forever and ever. Amen. Today's second collection is gratefully received to help with ongoing restoration efforts at the cathedral. Your generosity is appreciated. Oh! 
Sisters and brothers, pray with me that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Be mindful, Lord, that your Son, who is peace, has destroyed our hatreds by his blood. Looking in mercy on our evil deeds and grant that to those whom you love, this sacrifice may restore peace and tranquility through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, Yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare us for reconciliation. Even more by your Spirit you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again. Adversaries join hands and peoples seek to meet together. By the working of your power it comes about, O God, that hatred is overcome by love. Revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. Father, we bless you through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves are turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O God, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom, for our sake, you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you. Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, 
that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. But when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he took bread into his hands. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for upon your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us together with your Son and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our sisters and brothers and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all the glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Jesus Christ be with you. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Bless the Lord who 
that night directs my heart. I keep the Lord ever in my sight, since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. Oh, Lord, you are the center
May the flame of love within the hearts of Jesus and Mary burn deeply within you, the members of the Flame of Love movement, as you pray that you come more deeply not only to love the Virgin and the Lord Jesus, but love his people. And may your prayers pierce the hearts of all around the world, that we may come to know hope and joy peace and tranquility. We ask this with the intercession of the Virgin, who reigns with the Lord Jesus, Father, Son, and Spirit, our God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Grant to us, O Lord, that nourished with the delights of the one bread that fortifies the human heart, we may successfully overcome the fury of war and resolutely keep your law of love and justice through Christ our Lord. Now these ladies over here pray very well, but they also cook very well. And in the back of the church is wonderful Filipino food that they share. I've never had Filipino food till I came to the cathedral. So first come, first serve, get out of my way as I go down the main aisle, okay? <laughs> Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. <laughs>